So um, it's hard to make artwork when you've got kids. Well, uh, you've, you've done <laughs> wonderfully, um, you know, as we can and, see on the... Um, hard not because they're... It's hard because to make time, basically. Yeah. And, um, and these works are a little bit about... Are, are in a way a little bit about that because it's like when I'm in the studio, it's a space for me to um, feel like I'm, you know, making um, uh, a difference in my own mental state. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a calming space. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a centering place. It's a little bit like, uh, some people, uh, do, uh, spend in the garden, mm -hmm. spend time in the garden. Um, and so in that way, these works are, are a bit about that and they are, uh, um, an invitation for other people to find that space as well. Well, I can see, um, and we'll talk a bit more about it later on, but the foliage, uh, you know, as the kind of backdrop to many of these works, um, does that, I don't know, um, represent some form of gardening for you? Um, only in that, um, uh, that they, they are plants that are from people's gardens, they are from my local environment, they're from my backyard as well. Okay. Um, just see if you're going to be up here, to sit quietly please. Um, they are, they are the plants that people use for privacy in their, in their domestic environments, like their screening plants. Okay. So, um, so yeah, they're a, they're a surface on which these, uh, other abstract details can happen. Yeah, okay. Listen, you can so. make noise, go back to Nanny. Um, all right, so let, let's get into some of the meat, right? So in preparation for the talk, I found this paper uh, called Mark Making and Human Becoming uh, by Lambros Malaf uh, Malafouris, a professor of archaeology at Oxford. Um, and in that paper, Malafouris asks, what do marks do and how do they signify? Um, which I feel these questions are relevant for us here today because your work, as I understand it, is oriented around gestural marks, um, and you know the uh, exhibition is aptly named, abbreviated gestures. So, um, what do gestural marks signify for you as an artist? Um, just a, a a sort of a state of flow. Okay. So I. Um, uh, a free a freedom in just in just drawing or or, or doodling or um, or um, sort of like you know the margins of a of a of a book yeah or what we used to do when you were on the telephone that was attached to the wall you know uh, and just do some doodling on the, on a on a sketch pad or something so they're um they're just the evidence of of um, some kind of um, humanity or or uh, existence. Yeah. Okay. Really. And um, so I, I've titled the theme uh, "Gestural Marks" as being. Uh, it's a pretty loaded title in a couple of ways. Um, so first, because it, it's proposing that gestural marks somehow have or signify being, uh, and second, um, it creates this contrast between being and what's not stated, becoming. Right, so being um, understood typically in philosophy as something that points to essence, something that is everlasting, and becoming uh, pointing to, I guess, life in, in the way that it unfolds and uh, that is perpetually changing. So do you see the gestural marks as something potentially everlasting or are they intended to signify more um, something changing? Something changing, I think. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 case for the marks is always the same. I think, like the like the underlying reason for them, but the the, the types of marks that exist, I think, are change will change. Um, I mean, it's it's um, quite interesting, I suppose, to think about. Um, 
with these works that the, the gestural marks on the top of them are a interaction with a surface. Mm -hmm. And so um, just as uh, in some of my previous works, there's been the, um, the abstracted shapes are the, are the surface. Uh, these are the play, are the surface of where um, things can play around and move in front and behind and um, through, comp through collage, there's that, um, there's that play of different um, interactions between shapes. Uh, in these works, the, the, the surface is in front of the foliage, the space, the very shallow space between the foliage and us, mm. um, where these things happen. And it's sort of like, for me, um, the, the, the gestural marks are always there, sort of like um, someone said about these works that they remind, uh, remind them of um, uh, when you have uh, a, a, a generative degenerative eye condition okay. and you start to see, uh, you know, the, the floaters, the float, yeah, the yeah. floaters and things. So, um, so it's just a reminder that for, for me and for, I guess, um, all of us, uh, there's things that happen between us and the perceptible world mm. and in between that, those two bookends, there's uh, activity. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I want to go back to um, uh, Malaforus uh, on the point of um, these gestural marks. And so according to him, or according to uh, cognitive archaeology, uh, mark making, uh, which you know, dates back to uh, cave people, um, is evidence of cognitive representation in humans. So it's like humans thinking about something and then making a mark to signify that thing. Um, and so in that sense, uh, you know, it can be considered everlasting. But um, what he argues in his paper, which I think is along the lines of what you're saying here, is that the marks uh, or mark making is not purely cognitive. Um, and that it can be a product of non-representation and just kinesthetics, like people just sort of doing things. So um, to that end, I mean, how much of these marks are somewhat incidental? Like, do they just kind of happen? Um, yeah, practice? I mean, they're all, they're all incidental, but they are, um, they're all from, they're all individual. Okay. Uh, into in, in that they are um, uh, I'm collecting them from a range of different sources that I've made, mm -hmm. uh, whether through uh, drawing or, or, or brush um, work or um, uh, or on the screen, uh, and then they they're translated into digital forms to then be able to around with them so they're all they're all um distilled from from yeah incidental moments of, of mark making okay um i wanted to ask you something else but before i go to that just talk us through that process a little bit because it sounds quite interesting and involved um so how do you how do you do this um so i find the uh, artist journal a really important tool and for, for me it's a space where I can collect different uh, Im images, different marks, different um, different um, line drawings, different mm -hmm. thumbnail drawings, whatever, and then they become that, that uh, things uh, and also things from observation um, and so in the journal then it becomes like a um, an archive of available forms to use, and um, and in these works, um, I can I can search through that, that that archive, and I can find a particular detail, and I can say that I can think to myself, well, that mm -hmm. that's going to be good there. Okay. Um, and that's how the works kind of um, can be built up that way. Okay. It's a manual archive that you. It's a manual archive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then, do you scan it and blow it up? Or it's a, well, it's a manual. It's manual and never. It's a. It's a. It's a. Um, it's something that is always changing. 
Okay. Um, there's manual elements and digital elements, and it's a it's a okay. it's a dynamic thing. Yeah. Cool. So, um, like when I look at these, uh, and I said this to you when we talked, uh, it looks as though you finished the foliage, um, and then just got no brush and just kind of painted over it. Um, is that how it happened? Um, that's how it happens mentally. <laughs> so what actually happens? The reality is much slower because um, they look, in my mind, they, they, they're kind of fast paintings to look at because yeah. um, you can take them in quite quickly and, and, and um, they seem to be one part of a, a, a one part of something that could keep going on for a mm. long time, and it's just an, it's just it's just something that's kept this. Each work is a moment captured, mm. but in reality, of course, um, it's quite painstaking. All of the all of the the actual um, painting of them in the um, in the depiction of the foliage and the and the um, the very carefully painted opaque and translucent um, marks on top they take quite a, a long time to paint and um, and so that that tension between the, the, the rapid way that they're viewed mm. and the slow way that they're depicted I think is important so I guess to ask that same question but in a different way are there leaves under here? Or some of them are, some of them don't. Okay. So some of them you you're sort of painting the gestures there's, there's the leaves under these just ones. direct on canvas. Yeah, okay. yeah, I can see it. <laughs> okay. And uh, I mean to that to that end, like the ones that are a bit more translucent, right? Do you um, paint the leaves fully and then kind of come in over the top or you just do them um, simultaneously? Like this? Um, simultaneously, I guess. Okay. It just, I mean, it has some practical things to think about, I suppose, about the drying times of different pigments and, mm. um, and the, um, the mixing of different colours and whatnot. Yeah. And so, and, you know, I find that quite... Um, Same. I don't know. Confronting is probably not the word, but certainly interesting in that in the way you describe the work right so you have the foliage as backdrop mm. and then these marks and then ourselves as the viewer and the marks are kind of um, in between a drink. Um, a drink um, <laughs> ourselves and uh, and the foliage almost like uh, we mentioned you know having a degenerative eye condition and these kind yeah. of float in between but the production of them is not necessarily that way right the, no. the marks are happening simultaneously to the, the backdrop yeah yeah. Uh, yeah yeah that um that's that's not something that's unique to these works okay i mean that's um that's just the nature of painting on a two-dimensional surface isn't yeah, okay. it? that even though there's like the, we perceive a an, an overlap of images it doesn't mean that there's actually overla overlapping mm. happening on the painting yeah. um just like on a, um, I mean, it's the same with any screen technology. There's no um, documents open behind other documents. It's all just one flat surface, just like yeah. these. Thank you. <laughs> right, go back over there. We're nearly finished. Right, I love this. Uh, I, I, I'm just going <laughs> to um, let it happen. <laughs> Daddy. Because it's, this it's, will be a strongly edited. Um, no, no, I think <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll watch it as is. You want a drink? Yeah. Go and ask Emmy for a drink. She's got the power to give you drinks. Go on, go and ask Emmy for a drink. Go on, both of you. What I, what I love about what's going on right now, right, is that we have and and okay, so I'll, I'll make it philosophical, right? This tension between being and becoming. So there's an essence to these, right? Typically, so this is number nine, and there's the kind of format. But then we have these gorgeous 
children just kind of disrupting it and just making it be something else. You know? So uh, I'm, I'm going to embrace that. Uh, so back, back to this. Um, I've been looking at the, the works for a good part of a week since we talked last week and there's something about them that, um, I don't know, troubles me, bothers me. Uh, and I don't, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a compliment actually because mm. what I'm suggesting there is that there's a kind of frustrating element that is um, you know, interacting with something within me beneath the surface that I can't quite get at. And, um, and I've been reflecting on that for a week and thinking, What's, why is that happening? What's happening there? And I, I think it also bothers me that I don't know what's bothering me. Um, do you paint with that in mind? or do, do, do What do you mean? Like, what's, bo what's bothering you? I don't know. I, I just look at them and something happens, right? Affectively, I'm like, I can't quite... They, they don't settle in, uh, in my consciousness. Um, they don't let me rest. I just kind of want to keep looking. You know? Keep looking, that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah keep looking, something's happening, I don't understand it. Um, and uh, this is the first time I've seen them in person, mm. right? which again, is quite different to looking at them on the um, laptop screen. But um, yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're certainly evocative in that way. Do you, do you paint with that in mind or, is there, or do people um, you know, comment having similar experiences with, with mm. the works? Um, I guess like, I mean, I'm, I'm never going to stop making paintings yeah. and, um, and I guess what, why, why would I, why, what's that about? You know, the same sort of things what you're saying, why, why do, why do people, why do we keep, um, Searching or making or mm. reading or writing or what what and so um, I guess yeah there's just maybe that's the thing that you're resp responding to a little bit because um, I mean I really had fun making these and I I always think that's quite important mm. and so um, each time I you know I make a painting I'm looking forward to making the next one and the next mm. one. And, um, and it's um, it's only because it's like it's a con it's a continual um, drive, or it's a or it's a continual search for something that's um, fulfilling or mm. troubling, or staying with something that's uncomfortable or whatever the. So is that discomfort or some of that there for you as you're painting? Like yeah, from, I think so. from work to work, you 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 kind of. Yeah, uh, I mean, after I hung the exhibition, I sat and looked at them for a little while. Yeah. You know, if I want to keep looking at them, I'm hoping that other people will want to look at them. Yeah. Well, I certainly do. I mean, you I, know, you know, they're for me as much as they are for other people. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't just make them for others to look at, and I don't just make them for myself. I'm trying to create a situation where um, you know that, that they are people are drawn to them and want and want to spend time with them. Mm. You had a reviewer say um, that the pieces, well, not necessarily these ones, but you know, works I think you had done in the past look like they could go on forever. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned to me that that was said as a bit of a critique. Um, can you sort of comment on why you felt that was a critique and what um, that statement meant for you? Um, well, there are... There are a couple of ways to think about um, painting, isn't there? One one way is that um, is that a painting is a is holds within it many many hours of of uh, activity, mm. and so um, and so uh, by virtue of that those hours withheld within that painting, mm. um, you're drawn to look at it. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes like this, this, um, this precious thing that 
someone has invested a lot of time and effort into and so you're you're drawn to look at it and um and through through that and also through a compositional strategy of um of arranging elements so that you consist constantly reinforced to look around the painting mm. that's one way of it's one way that um that painting uses to kind of hold your attention. Mm. Um, these paintings, however, there are elements that are flying off the edge. Mm. And, so, and so actually, um, when looking at these works, you can, you can it can be quite difficult a little bit because you keep, your eye keeps mm. uh, shooting off the edge. Yeah, sure. Um, but, but I think that's, that's quite interesting. That's something that makes them fast. That's something that makes them contemporary in, in terms of our um, our engagement with images generally mm -hmm. is quite quick. And so these works um, are part of that um, image ecology. Okay. And what do you think the reviewer was trying to say other than Obviously, compositionally, they, they look like they can go on. Like obviously, they just oh, just on. that um, that there's a danger in in having works that that um, that have elements that cause you to lose attention, because that you lose the attention of the viewer of, of a viewer, or um, and that you you can't focus on the work. Mm. But I think that that's that's actually something that's um, a condition that we are all naturally becoming more fluent in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I get that. And I mean, the fact that it's intentional, I think, um, is important, right? You, you're not doing this accidentally. It's, it's happening quite com like intentionally. Yeah. Um, so this notion of uh, potentially going on forever and not being contained um, can be said to be rhizomatic. We talked a bit about that. Uh, so Deleuze and Guattari, as we know, argue um, that the grand narrative of arborescence or the grand tree uh, falls apart in the postmodern world. Uh, the grand narrative that endeavours to explain everything or contain everything according to a set of fundamental principles uh, is no longer a project we can rightly pursue. So as Camus might say, the world is much too absurd to be contained in this way. Uh, so Deleuze and Guattari offer us this concept of the rhizome instead. Uh, an organism of interconnected living fibers that has no central point, no origin, and no particular form, unity, or structure. A rhizome does not start from anywhere or end anywhere. It is not as magnificent as a great big tree. Um, and I suppose maybe that's part of the frustration of this viewer. Right? But um, I, I think also, you know, how can something seemingly so immaterial have more potentiality and power uh, than something as a grand tree? And yet it, it does. Um, I think these rhizomatic forms are longer living and longer lasting just because they're decentralized. Um, do you have any thoughts on the rhizome concept and um, how it features in, in the works? Uh, yeah, I mean the the metaphor of the the plant, the rhizomatic structure of the root system of plants, and their um, their they, that's the structure of the plants that are in these works, mm -hmm. most of them, in that they are fast to establish and they are um, they are self multiplying and self sustaining, and then they can go on forever potentially. Um, I mean, uh, the negative part of those negative connotations with those plants is that they're invasive, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and but but in terms of a, meta of a metaphor for 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 painting, um, it's a good one because it means that for these works, they are that is something in them that means that they can, um, that I can think about, okay, 
the next work is coming and the next work is coming and I can keep making and making and um, and it's a life affirming type of idea mm -hmm. rather than a um, rather than something that is um, uh, somehow lesser than other types of ways of thinking about art for mm -hmm. me it's it's a way to think about making that is um, um, that is resilient mm -hmm. and um, adaptable and um, and uh, quite powerful but mm. also uh, also can be um, um, like counter to the um, like the large tree mm -hmm. you know counter to the to the to the to the um, it's what's the word for it when it's something is like anyway uh, yeah I think that the, the, it's a it's a good metaphor for painting because it's it's it means that it can be um, self-sustaining mm. and you're speaking at it about it on two levels there right like the the works themselves are rhizomatic in in terms of um, I guess what's on the canvas but I hear you saying that your practice is rhizomatic. Yep. You, know, it, you kind of just expand further and further out into your works yeah. as, as they unfold. Yeah, the works themselves are the image of the plants. Mm. Uh, the pra my practice is it's sort of I'm I'm interested in you know what does it mean to be productive in your own creativity and mm. what does it mean to um, be able to get up every day and do this. Mm. You know. Yeah, I like it. Um, thank you. So, uh, is this your son over there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I understand he also gives commentary on the works. Sometimes. Yeah, Ruben. Hi, Ruben. <laughs> uh, so, is it this piece here, Shell Ginger? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he might have said that it's empty. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to ask you what you think he meant by that, but he's here. So. He's here. Uh, yeah. Did, maybe you. I'll ask I'll, you. What do you I'll, think he I'll meant? And then I'll ask yeah, him I'll what he meant. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, yeah. The work behind me, uh, the, the shell ginger work, um, doesn't have very many abstracted gestural marks on it. Um, and uh, Ruben said to me after it was finished that it looks like emptier than some of the other works. Hmm. And I said, "What do you mean?" And he said, "Well, there's not very much in it." And I said, "Well." There is. There's there's lots in it because look at all the all the leaves I had to paint. You know, I spent a lot of time painting all the leaves in the work. He goes, oh no no, I don't. I just mean it's got less stuff in it. You know, and I and I that sat with me for a little while because I was trying to understand what that what that meant. And I know that I know that I know what he meant on the face of it, but what does that mean at a in a deeper kind of way um, about the way that we gauge with paintings? Mm. Um, and so in these works, the figurative element of the painted foliage becomes in a way less um, noticeable or less, we're less inclined to look at those images as paintings mm. than we are to look at the gestural marks on top as paint, okay. as paint. Like we're le less likely to look at um, figurative images as paint and look at them more so at, at in terms of their content yes but the gestural marks on top we look at that as paint and not as an image of something yeah so there's a disconnect between those two modes of uh, looking that's right and, and there's a duality in that that um, I, I do want to um, pick up on but it's uh, it's not often that we have the actual commentator in the room <laughs> uh, so just for the record did you say that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what did you mean by, um, by that? Well, I guess all your other artworks, all the shapes have been more grouped or clumped, I guess, and it seems more energetic or, I don't know, ecstatic. And this just seems more spread out and spacious and calmer, I guess, even though it's got more paint than nearly all of your other artworks. It seems just 
seems to settle a bit hmm. nicer than the two others. And, and are you referring to the um, marks or the entire uh, painting, including the foliage, when you say it's, it's more empty? I'm talking about how the, like, the plants in the background, they give sort of a, um, a calming background, well, yeah, mm -hmm. a calming back to let you focus more what's in the foreground, I guess. Mm -hmm. So they just supply an easy, easiness on the eyes as you focus more on the, what did you the call marks. It? All the marks. The yeah, marks. okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and so t to that point, right, uh, there's this other duality that, that comes up in the work for me between, of course, we talk about being and becoming, um, uh, you know, uh, trees and rhizomes, and now there's this um, duality between the foliage and the marks themselves, right? It makes this rather provocative statement to me, so the painting is making a statement to me. You think you are looking at marks on images of nature, but it's all just paint. These are all gestural marks on the canvas. Um, to what extent does that statement accurately capture what the work is saying or doing? Yeah, that's true. Mm. It's all just paint. Mm. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of potential, I think, in painting that, um, that is um, that appears time and again um, in really good painting mm. in that it, it makes you it does what you said before it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable or it makes you yeah. feel like drawn to it restless, or yeah. restless and you want to spend time with those sorts of paintings yeah so I mean I think that's that's um really quite an accomplishment to be able to draw out duality, which, I don't know, it seems to be something about the human mind. We, we, we you know, is it mind or body? Is it being or becoming? Is it uh, images of nature or gestures? You know, we, we seem to have this tendency to want to um, reflect in dualities and then to try to overcome them and um yeah i think it's it's really quite remarkable that you've done that on the canvas um even to the point as ruben was saying it's it's like the foliage just acts as a very kind of calm mm. backdrop and yet we're just looking at paint on a two-dimensional surface um so once i allow myself to accept that right, i've got a lot of work i'm working through <laughs> um that perhaps there's no duality on the canvas between nature and gesture. I'm still, um, yeah, potentially left with the duality of being and becoming. But I think, you know, you resolved that for me um, earlier in the conversation when you said um, that the paintings aren't really trying to convey any essence. They're just, they're conveying movement and flow and things as they unfold. Mm. Um, Okay, so um, yeah, to, to that end, I think it's a, it's a good place to maybe pause. Uh, so I want to congratulate you on the show. Thank you. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's a marvelous collection of work and it's wonderful to see them in person. We, we have a small audience today, but um, if anyone would like to make a comment or ask a question, now's a good time. I have a question. Yes. Um, so in your statement, Saying that the marks instead of those like marks on a you know, touch screen, for example, on a smartphone, and also sort of refer to the history of sort of art. I'm just wondering what artists there are, but for example, who are the ones in particular that you would see kind of yourself as extending that lineage? Um, well, in the statement, I was talking a little bit about, um, uh, yeah, touch, you're right, touch screen technology, but also gestural abstraction um, and so um, to think about abstract expressionism and gestural abstraction and that history means that I'm um, referring to like 
this idea that the brush is an extension of the arm and like all of these sorts of um, that each mark is connected somehow to the to the to the personality of the artist, someone um, like you know, like Pollock, for example, or that romantic idea, um, and that and so these these marks are come from either me drawing or me using my finger, mm. uh, and so it's a it's a much more dialed down connection to that history, uh, much more, um, I don't know, ironic or something. Mm. Um, but, um, but it's just about, you know, like what, what that, 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 that hand made aspect of the, of the, of the colorful marks is, uh, there in the, in the application of the paint in the cutting of the masking, and then also in the in the um, painting of the foliage, so it's there in different modes. Um, and so, yeah, that 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 presence of the hand, um, I feel, never goes away, no matter how much you try and distance yourself from it. In 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 and in many ways, the less obvious the hand mark is, the more powerful it becomes mm. because you have to look for it and it becomes something that someone has tried to hide and therefore it becomes very, very loud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I have so many questions, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Is, and yeah, actually the both. So you, you feel restless and more Mm. So, is there, because there, it seems to me, you ask if the leaves are underneath mm. the paint, but you don't ask if the white is underneath the blue. Yeah. You, you don't, I so don't. there's a tension <laughs> that exists between what is background mm. and what is foreground, yeah. and the impossibility of it being the foreground. Mm. And you bring in that gestural aspect of the screen. So where does the gesture sit now in this contemporary time? Is that the restlessness of where the gesture sits? Yeah, but potentially. Um, and, and that's a great question, right? Because I don't look at that and, oh, yes, the white is behind the blue. Uh, because in my mind, I've categorized it as this. Uh, these are the bright colors on top. And then this is what's in the background. But when you bring it to my attention, well, clearly, or well, not clearly, I mean, because of the way they're painted, they're probably not even that way. But um, yeah, the, the, the restlessness remains. I don't really have an answer for you, but go ahead. Um, yeah, I think that there's a, um, there's a, a movement that potential movement that can happen between layering of things, and they and they they almost feel like they could be moving around, and that um, at any at any moment, you know, you kind of have to jump to grab them as they are, because and this is that this is that moment, because um, after this they can move away again, just like you can, just like you can move things digitally, and you can never go. Well, you can go back a few times, but you can never really go back. And so, um, and so, um, something that um, is probably more a connection that's more apparent in my some of my earlier work is with, I guess, um, the cutouts of Matisse, and he used to constantly rearrange shapes with pins. And if you look at the look at the collage works, there's lots of little pinholes in the paper. Um, because he would constantly change and um, change his mind about where all these shapes should go, um, and um, and so yeah, for me that's there's a there's a there's a liveliness in that, and there's a there's something contingent in that, and that never really um, that means that I can do more work because it means 
if I just slightly move these things and, and paint another painting, that's a whole other work. Mm. And you know, but the painting locks it. The painting you locks it. Painting that's right. It. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I had um, an analogy come up for me, uh, and sorry, I'm you know, doing my own psychotherapy here as we <laughs> do Q and A. But um, does anyone remember the snake game on um, the Nokia phones? <laughs> That's what's coming up for me. Like I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, how long is it going to last before I run into my own tail here mm. and, and, and the game's over? Um, because there is a strong movement with the marks. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what's coming up for me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good analogy. And, um, and yeah, there's, like you say, there's a, there's a categorization of the two different things. But when yeah. you really look at it, like Carl said, there's actually more than two layers there's, mm. and you can keep potentially keep building that up to the point where you obliterate the whole thing yeah that's great Ruben you want to put your dad on the spot any questions Ruben <laughs> um sure what um I've, around the world of paintings there's not a single Ruben, stop asking the hardest questions. <laughs> um, no, all of the all of the all the gestural marks in this one are all very um, soft and they're well, they're hard edged. They're sharp edged, but they're not um, pointed in terms of their um, geometry. And mm. that, I think that's about um, about the. Um, the drawing, um, the line, drawing a line and enlarging that line, um, enlarging the, the point or enlarging a, um, uh, so that it becomes, it's like a, um, yeah, like a, like the way that you draw on your phone or something. Cool. All right. Well, um, are we doing drinks? Or? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. thanks.